My name is Brandon Gaithan. I'm a member of the Volpe Lab at the University of California, Berkeley. And today I'm going to be telling you about how we use yeast to understand the toxicity of various environmental contaminants. The project I work on is called Functional Profiling of Susceptibility Genes. So essentially, this means we use yeast to understand which genes are involved in the response to many environmental chemicals. And this can help us learn about susceptible individuals or populations to these chemicals. The yeast we use is called budding yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's the same yeast that we use to make beer, wine, and bread. We think it's great for many reasons. We like to think of it as super yeast. It's very simple to grow, it's easy to manipulate, it's cheap, but most importantly, many of the effects that we see in yeast can be similar to those in humans. A lot of the genes are similar, as well as the cellular processes that these cells undergo. So this means that what we learn about toxicity in yeast can be applied to humans. I'm going to tell you a story today about dialdrin, one of the chemicals that I look at. Dialdrin is a pesticide that was heavily used in the 1950s through 80s. The problem with it is that it doesn't break down in the environment. It persists in the environment. So it contaminates sediment, groundwater, wildlife, and humans. Not a whole lot is known about the toxicity of dialdrin, but it has been linked to Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, disruption of hormones, and cancer. So in order to study these processes that dialdrin might affect, we use yeast. The method we use relies upon a collection of deletion mutants. So here I'm showing you four, but in reality we have about 5,000. So each of these mutants is missing a specific gene. Now we can grow these mutants in dialdrin, and some of these mutants will grow better and some will grow worse, depending on whether that missing gene is needed for the response. Essentially, this allows us to find mutants with growth defects, and this can tell us about the toxicity of the chemical. I'm going to show you some results from dialdrin. On the left, you can see in the gray bars that normal yeast does just fine in the presence of dialdrin. But this mutant on the right, BAP2, does not grow well at all. This mutant is missing an amino acid transporter. It transports nutrients into the cell. So we added back the nutrient that it transports, leucine. So you can see that in the presence of dialdrin and leucine, leucine rescues the growth of this mutant. So we found that dialdrin alters nutrient availability. And we hope that this can inform studies in human cells. So I've shown you today that we can use yeast to study human toxicity by showing you an example with dialdrin, which alters nutrient availability. In the future, we'll be using robotics to study the toxicity of other environmental chemicals. Robotics is very high throughput. It will allow us to study many chemicals at once and perhaps inform legislators about the toxicity of these chemicals so that we may be able to further protect human health. Thank you.